It was cuddly 10 seconds ago, I promise. Mm, happy New Year from Beans and Grace and James who's in the other room watching Modern Family. Beans, say hi. Mm -hmm. He is extra fluffy today. Mm, he's got a little bell. We got him a little bell for Christmas for scaring away the tiny birds. Because you're a monster. Mm -hmm. A cute little jangly monster now. There you go. Bye. Hello and welcome to Babbles Travelling Yarns. This is a knitting, spinning and weaving podcast uh, based in Limerick in Ireland. Um, uh, my name is Grace. You can follow me on all the social medias as Vanna Willemiel or Babbles Yarns. I am on most of them as both actually. I have a Facebook page um, uh, but I generally just repost stuff that I do on Instagram. That's my main area, my main kind of, that's where you can get me the most. Um, and my uh, my personal profile is the most active and that's what I generally tend to go to, which is Vanna Willemiel. <clears throat> so I have been back to work, um, back to work this week. So it has been, what day is it today? The 6th of, 6th of January? Um, yeah, so I was off Monday, Tuesday, which was a New Year's Eve and New Year's Day. And then I was working Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. I was on nights on Wednesday. Or th was that right? I think I was on call. I don't know. Anyway, I feel like I've been back to work and I worked yesterday, which was Saturday. Um, so yeah, it feels like <laughs> Christmas never really happened. I feel like I'm back into the swing of it already. Um, I didn't get much knitting done but that's good because like Kristen of Will and Vine I think I'm going to try and start to keep these vlogs under 30 minutes. I would love to do that. So I'm going to be talking to you about three projects, um, three, three knitting projects and then one spinning project today. So let's get started. My first spinning, my, my first knitting project is also a spinning project. It is in this beautiful bag by my cottage number nine, Terry. She makes these gorgeous, um, beautiful zipper bags or huge sweater bags. And um, the the handles are actually part of the, the trim around the top, which is lovely. It comes from her other bag. Um, the, where is it? The idea comes from her wraparound bags which I don't have anything in this one at the moment, but it is my most used bag generally. So it's a drawstring bag that then turns into handles. It's amazing. It's empty at the moment. And I, I brought it to um, Barcelona when I went to Barcelona Knits Festival. If you're interested in that, the vlog, I'll just link the vlog down below. I had two or three days there and it was amazing. And I got loads of these pins and had a great time with the girls from Norn and Julie and the townhouse girls and Le Ben and me. And this was a beautiful badge that was given to me by Abanda Holt. She's a, uh, a ceramic artist based out of the Netherlands, I think, but she's lovely. And I got this beautiful pin. I think I got this from Viv at my retreat that I held back in October. So, <clears throat> So these are the wraparound bags and they're fantastic. They generally tend to sell out. So if you are interested in getting one, um, it's a beautiful bag, really sturdy. She uses really, really good quality fabric and she is my cottage number nine. And I'll put the details down below in the show notes underneath the video. So what's in this massive bag? Well, as well as my entire life, <laughs> I've got I've got, I've got the Strick Planner by Melanie Berg, which is basically a knitting diary for the whole year. And I'm hoping to keep this up. Um, in here is a little swatch that I'm gonna talk about in a minute. What else is in here? My pattern, I've got a lavender sachet. Uh, I've got painkillers, <laughs> eyeglasses, wipes, earphones, you know, the essentials. And uh, tea. Oh, tea that was given to me by lovely uh, Barbara of Knitting I Love, some Polish tea, which I haven't tried yet. I must try that actually. And as well is my uh, Yume sweater by Isabel Kramer. And this is the sweater that I 
helped to design, not really, I knit about 40 rounds on a sleeve for her. <laughs> but it's got a little bit of a lace detail at the top there. And then the rest is just a really simple, just straight down kind of a, um, a box, not boxy, but no, no, no waist shaping. It's a top down yoke basically. And I am working on quite a short needle, I think, at the moment, um, just in the round on the body. I have split for the sleeves and I'm working away down. <gasps> Isn't it beautiful? So it's got this brown band, which I think is going to go over my boobs, but that's okay. Uh, <laughs> so I haven't tried it on in a while. Um, sorry if you can hear the washing machine. Um, it's the only day we have off to do the washing, so, and it's the only day I have off to podcast. So this is <clears throat> backwards, that's the back of it. it, has a few extra short rows at the neck there. Um, so this is the top, beautiful uh, lace, and I'm working my way down. I like working on a sh smaller needle, um, just because I find that, it, that um, the stitches tend to move around a lot quicker. I don't know if it's just in my head or not, but you're you're not stopping to move the stitches along, like stretch them over a longer period of the yarn, uh, a longer stretch of the cable. So basically you're, you've got most of your needles there, you're most of your stitches there, so I can work across that quite quickly. So what am I working these on? I am, I am knitting on two different sizes of needle. Have you ever tried this? <clears throat> so I was working on um, 3.75 Chowgu needle sizes and net needles and I'm actually working on yarn that I've spun up myself. So I'm working three balls at a time actually using my jogless join method which I'll talk about as well. But I'll just talk about the difference in needle size. So the needle that I'm knitting with is in my right hand and that is the size that I got gauge with. I got gauge with a 3.75 millimeter needle. So that's the needle that's in my right hand. That's the needle that is making stitches. But I was finding it kind of difficult to, because of the yarn, the yarn is quite stretchy and bouncy and sometimes the I had over twisted the yarn so it's a little bit ropey in, peer, in places so it was a little bit tricky to get the needle in and to make it so what I did was I changed out the left hand needle the needle that the stitches are coming off and this is a size 2.75 so it's a whole one millimeter size like down so that's this this <clears throat> so what happens is you make the stitches, they are the right size because you're making them on the larger needle. Then they move around and they slip off the smaller needle much easier. And it just makes the whole process of knitting around in a circle so much easier, I find. And um, the, the, my gauge is still the same relatively. It is hand spun yarn, so it's a little bit tricky. But I generally do this on all of my projects. I really do. On all of my knitting in the round big sweater projects, you know, with that oceans and oceans of stock in it, just to make it go a little bit faster, I tend to have a smaller circumference needle. And uh, sometimes having a smaller circumference needle does mean the stitches fall off. But what I do is I have this wonderful tool from Knitting I Love. It's a little pouch. This is the winter pouch that she has designed and it's you can see well it's a little bit dark there but it says winter on the back and you've got a ruler in um inches and in centimeters which is ooh, super handy this little snap here opens up and what i do is i when i've when i've finished for the night i'll actually put it in there and then i'll actually separate out i'll find the little snap on this i push it through the fabric and then I snap that across. It doesn't damage the fabric at all, but that doesn't fall out now. The stitches won't come off. You can also use sti needle, you know, stoppers, but I really love the look of these. It keeps, um, it keeps the points from like poking through my lovely bag and um, it looks pretty. So I've got a winter one just because it is winter and I am knitting this. One. So that solves the problem of having all the stitches on a shorter needle. Um, which is basically that they sometimes slip off, especially they slip off the smaller needle as well. So that is really handy. I love having that, so I'll just pop that in there. So yeah, 
So the stitches I'm making are on the bigger needle on the right hand side and the stitches that I am knitting on the previous row are on the smaller size needle which just makes it easier. So yeah that is my, um, I have a, a lot of tips actually for knitting in the round because it's my favourite thing to do because I literally don't have to think. I can just sit in the cinema and watch the TV or I can just sit and work. I know I'm not going to make any mistakes because if there's lace or cables or anything like that I won't make any mistakes. Um, it does tend to move slowly but only in my mind in reality I probably knit things too long because I do it with this technique and I don't know when to stop. <laughs> um, yeah, I just enjoy just knitting, just plain knitting in the round. And I do knit without looking <clears throat> most of the time and that comes with practice. A lot of people have asked me, how do you do it? How do you knit without looking? I'd love to be able to do it. I'd love to be able to knit in the cinema, but I need light. I need to look at my stitches all the time. And um, I just started um, practicing, at, like consciously looking up and just feeling one stitch knitting into it, checking, okay, I made that one, let's try two this time. Okay, checking, yeah, you know, and just like, you know, maybe, maybe challenge yourself to knit one or two stitches without looking at it and then just increase it. And before you know it, your fingers will feel the stitches moving up. They'll feel where it needs to go. You know, they will just start to feel this finger does a lot of work for me. It's my eyes. Uh, yeah, so I'm using these really adorable stitch markers from Coco Knits that I got in a yarn story and I've just come to one. So I'll just show you. They're triangle. I'm on the hunt for some hexagon, hexagonal um, stitch markers as well. So I just, I love the different shapes. I just love them. They're so nice. And in the little package, they're like, a, it's like a tiny, I'll try and find it for you so you can see. <laughs> Look, it's so small. And so, so small. Really cute. So uh, yeah, I got these from a yarn story when I was in Bath. Um, and you can see that at my Vlogmas. So I've got a couple, I've got a little stitch marker in there from Dr. Kelly. Hi, Kelly got some lovely little red shoes, little Dorothy shoes. She sent me a Wizard of Oz themed package. It was really sweet. Yeah. So I have got that in there. So that's what I'm using for this. And um, so the reason I am using three balls at one time is to try and maintain the fractal aspect of the garment. Now, what does that mean? So I explained it a little bit on my last podcast about how I spun the yarn. I spun the yarn using a fractal technique, which is when you get a braid of yarn. Well, maybe I'll use the same braid as last time. Oh, a different braid. <laughs> so this is a braid that goes from a dark brown all the way around to a light brown and then into a blue. So if I was to spin this fractally, I would split it down the middle. I would take it, take it out of the plait, split it down the middle and keep one to the side. I would spin that half all the way through just onto one bobbin so you'd get long repeats. You get a big long repeat of blue, a big long repeat of this light tan and then this big long repeat of brown and then into, this is almost black in the middle here. Then with the second braid what I would do is I would split it up into tiny little rovings, tiny little pencil rovings. This size, teeny tiny. This is a sample of one. I kept one just to show the colour as it progresses. So yeah, so I had t low, like maybe 15 of these little tiny rovings. They're only about this wide. And then I spun them end to end, always the starting with the same end, always starting with this larger part of blue as opposed to this small little part of blue. So I would spin all of those end to end. So you get really kind of quick repeats of the colour. It kind of looks a bit like self-striping, like really, really quick repeats as opposed to one long gradient. And then what you do is you spin them both together. So you spin, the, you should try and keep them all in the same direction. So you start with the blue end, the, the long blue end and the short blue end together, and then you just spin it all together. And what happens is, <clears throat> 
what I've noticed anyway, what I wanted to do is I wanted to keep that gradient. Now I had three of these uh, braids. So what I ended up doing was I connected three balls. I, I did, um, I cast on first and I knit the ribbing around the top and then I cast on um, and then I added the three balls of colour. And you can see that the first part is all blue and then it starts moving into the colours and then it goes back to blue and then it starts moving into the colours and then it goes back to blue. But you can see that in all of those brown sections, it's marled with the blue. So it has a background of blue in with the brown. And then it starts moving down into this brown section, which doesn't really have any blue in it, or if it does, it's only a little bit. So what that means is that all of the skeins have moved on to the, the section on the long part of the skein, which is brown. So I have now, pa it, it feels like, now I don't know if this is real or not, but it feels like I have moved from this blue section onto the brown section. And that brown section is all of this part. And now I think I've passed that brown section and I'm moving onto the blue again, if you see what I mean. But there, there is, there is little flashes of blue and there's little quick repeats of like a brown in the blue. So you're getting a really, um, you're getting bright pops of the original colour and it's not all getting greyed or, or marled all up together so none of the colours kind of uh, come through. You know, a brown and a blue would probably turn into some sort of, I don't know, this colour all the way down. You know, it might turn the whole garment kind of this browny green colour. Instead, what you've got is you've got stripes of, uh, subtle stripes of all of the different colours. And in some sections, you've got deeper backgrounds. So this one is blue and this is brown. So it's kind of working out. And I wanted to do three balls together because I wanted a significant blocks of colour. I wanted to keep it all like, use as much as possible. I didn't want to just have like super duper fast stripes. I did want a little bit of a, a more of a gradient feel, if that makes sense. But I love it. I love it. Mm. It's so pretty. <laughs> I'm in love with it. I can't stop knitting it. So yes. So I am knitting it in, I'm knitting three balls together. Now that can be a little bit tangly and I have found that I have been having a little bit of a challenge um, because it all kind of tends to come together. Two balls knitting together, alternating your skeins with two balls seems, that seems to be a lot easier than managing it with three. Um, now I know that, <laughs> but I think it's working out really, really well. So I'm not really, I'm not really too too concerned. Now, so these are the three balls I have left. As you can see, they're all pretty much in a blue section on the outside. I'm pulling from the outside because I pulling from the inside tends to ruin the ball, the integrity of the ball, and it all just goes yarn barfy and disgusting. And I've got enough to contend with with the three balls together. So um I feel like we're going to turn into a blue a brown section next and then a final blue section in the middle which tends to go with what the little sample, um, the little sample thingy I had. Where's it gone? There it is. Yeah, so you start off with blue, go into a deep brown, then blue, then brown, and then a little bit of blue. So, <clears throat> yeah, I think it's gonna work out. Now, the only thing is, I'm a little bit concerned about the sleeves, what I'm gonna do with the sleeves. Uh, I don't really know how much yarn I will have at the end but uh, I don't think it's gonna be a big problem. Um, I feel like this ball seems like I have more fiber in it, more more, more yardage in it, um, which makes sense because I spun these all at different times of the year. I didn't do one big spin all in one go. I kind of would do one, need a break, do something else, and then come back and do another, maybe a month later, two months later. So the spinning is not consistent, um, but, because I'm knitting them all together, all those consistencies are kind of just evening out and I'm not getting like a block of thicker yarn versus a block of thinner yarn. 
yeah, so it's working out really well. Yay! So I'm just knitting around and round and round, and I will keep you up to date with that. So, I love this, I love this, I cannot wait. I'm definitely gonna have this finished for Edinburgh. Hey, you went to Edinburgh? Oh, I'm so excited. Now, the next project I've been working on has just been something I've been bringing into work um, because it's been lying around for a long time. So I've been, and the other bag is just a little bit big. So I need a small project. This is a uh, Darth Vader yarn by Gamer Crafting. And I bought this uh, skein at, well, actually James bought it for me as a present to knit him socks. <laughs> it's Darth Vader yarn uh, from Gamer Crafting. And it's his lightsaber, Darth Vader's lightsaber. I think it's just called Vader. I'm not sure. But uh, it's got these specks of black in the grey and the red. So I am pulling from the inside and the outside of this ball, mainly because I'm too lazy to separate the ball into two... separate the skein into two balls. <laughs> I knit two at a time. My needle size of preference is 2.5 millimetres and I use magic loop technique. Someone asked me recently, which magic loop technique do you use? And I was like, I thought there was only one. Is there more than one magic loop technique? I know, I suppose, maybe using two needles. Like, is that? I don't think that's called magic loop, though. Magic loop is when you have... Your needle is bigger than the item that you're working on. The, the, circ the, the length of your cable and your needle together is bigger than the circumference of your item that you're working on. So you basically half your stitches and you pull out a loop halfway through. So what you do is then you work across your needles this way and then you flip your work and you work across your stitches, your other stitches on the other side this way. So you're actually connecting it in a, a magic loop. Now I do two at a time and two balls connected. Uh, I use uh, Mina's um, two at a time sock recipe, which I will link down below if you're interested. Um, and she works through it. She has a whole video series on it. So she was much better to explain it than I am. But I've got uh, the inside and the outside of the ball connected and I'm just knitting two socks from either side of the ball and they're working out really even actually like one side isn't well maybe this maybe this side is darker than this side but I don't I don't really I don't think you can tell a difference there's a flashing going on which I'm really liking because it's Darth Vader like he's might have slashed the feet and this is like the blood you know totally <gasps> So I am knitting James a pair of socks, which means that these are 72 stitch socks and they're going on forever. They have been my cinema knitting. You see that flash the way it goes all the way around. These have been my cinema knitting just when I'm knitting in the round. It's really, really handy. I love the way this micro striping happens. It's so satisfying to look at. Um, but I got to the part where I need to add a heel, so I, I can't really take them to the cinema to, or, you know, they're not my plain knitting anymore. Um, so I have to get the heels done before I carry on. So I do tend to do the heels on the same, keeping it on the needle. All I have to do is drop the other one, you know, keep the needle and just keep this, just work back and forth on this one. And then I move over to the other, to the other sock. I am doing a heel flap and gusset because I fancy it. I haven't done it in a while and James's feet kind of need some a little bit of space as well. I have done different types of um, um, short row heels on socks for James and I've done a, uh, a cut in heel, what's that called? Afterthought heel. Uh, the afterthought heel was not really adequate. Uh, I think he wears them he doesn't really care but you know I can see the stretch across his arch so yeah so I'm just trying this and I decided to do a, an eye of partridge heel but I'm kind of regretting it because you can't see it on the stripes you can't see that lovely pattern that you normally get if you see there it, it, it's lost completely so an eye of partridge heel is when you on the heel flap you slip one, knit one, slip one, knit one, slip one, knit one, slip one, knit one. So you start with a slip. 
and then on the other side you purl back and then you, you go back and you go knit one slip one knit one slip one so it's offset so you get kind of this nice diamond slip stitch pattern um i wonder do i have anything i don't know if i did it on this one no oh this one is a, a is just a straight one if you did all the slips in line so if you offset every second one then that works out this is my one sock i need to do another one <laughs> it's kind of a cute little example though that's a heel flap with just a slip stitch gusset whereas this one is a partridge heel and i feel like <clears throat> i could have given myself a little bit less work by just doing a just a plain old slip stitch one as opposed to a eye of partridge because it kind of ends up looking like it well it doesn't matter that's fine um i'm sticking with it anyway because once you do something you have to i have to continue make a mistake and then do it consistently and it's a pattern I'm telling you no so that's what i need to do now i need to i just did a gusset on this one i'll do the gusset on this one and then i'll pick up the stitches and and then I'll be knitting around in a circle again. So, yeah, one million stitches to decrease. I'm not looking forward to that. I hate the gusset part of a heel flapping gusset. It goes so slowly. I hate it so much. I don't know why. Anyway, I am just carrying this in a lovely bag that was sent to me by Carmen in LA. Thank you so much, Carmen. I love these little bucket bags. They're like little, um, um, they're just little kind of toiletry bags, travel toiletry bags, but they're so cute. So what's in there? Yeah, nonsense. I always have so much crap in my in my bags. What do you have? What's your what's the most random thing you've had in your bag? So the next one I want to talk about now is a project that I'm hopefully going to have finished by probably woolen at this stage. And oh no. I pulled my needle case out backwards, so now all the needles came out. Oh that sucks so badly. Yeah. I have to say these higher higher cases, they're not great. They are not great. I'll have to go through that now and figure out what's going on. Anyway, so I am working on using a... Do you remember last week I was talking about these gradient? So I uh, these gradient sock blanks that I had dyed up. So you can see they are from a sock blank. Um, and I've caked this up into a ball. It's a beautiful caramel one. I've been staring at it for ages. And I found some yarn. This is some deep brown uh, merino Lamamore Station Briar Patch yarn, organic, 100% super soft merino wool. It's from New Zealand. This is a DK8 ply, pure and natural. And I've been having trouble finding the right pattern to use this with. I was hoping to try and find just a pattern that would work. I haven't managed to find one that I like. So, yeah, I'll show you what I have been doing. Where is it gone? Did I put it down? Oh, yeah. So I was hoping to do Vintersol by Jennifer Steingas. I've been watching that for a long time and I was, I'm just in love with it. I really love the design. It was knit with two, scale, uh, two fingering weight yarns held together. Um... And I was like, oh, DK. But it turns out it's a bit more of a worsted weight. It's, the gauge is 19 stitches per inch. So I did a tiny swatch using the inside and the outside of the gradient skein and then the Lamamore yarn. And I love this color. I love the way it's going to go. And it actually, hopefully, what I really want to do is have the colors fade. Um, and in in the um, the... Do I have it printed off? I don't think I have. I need to get new toner for my printer. Um, in the Vintersol, what happens is these trees that, that are grown kind of fade to a point and then you have a little neckline. So I was hoping to, that it would fade, they would fade together 
you know, and like a mist, like a rising mist. And then I would use the top neckline. I would use that dark brown um, as a top neckline. But the gauge is off and it's off considerably. And I could change the needle size, but I really like the fabric that I'm getting with this. This is 24 stitches per inch, which is more like a fingering weight. I don't understand. Um, I'm thinking it's because of the color work is pulling everything in a little bit. It's a little bit tighter. So yeah, I might just try and do this beautiful pattern with a at a larger size and hopefully it would work out if I do the mats right. The other hand, I could just design a pattern. <sighs> I have, that would be, you know, I have two patterns which I have been saying I will write up. And now this might be a third one which I might say I might write up. I'm just scared. I don't know what I'm doing. And I just literally just don't have the urge to sit down and write it down. Like, I'm just lazy. I just want to knit. I just want to, I'm not lazy. It's just not in my, I don't have a, I just, I just don't really have a, uh, an inclination to do it. You know, some people do, and I don't know if I have it. Anyway whatever you can't do all the things all the time um <laughs> i was hoping that maybe 2019 might be my designing year and i think maybe i just need to break the back on it you know if i just sat down and just got into it maybe i would be fine do you know yeah probably maybe mm, maybe <laughs> so but i really love this design and i would love to um have it done for woolen as a sample um, because I've got a lot more of the gradient skeins um, done up and it would be nice to to have that. And then if I made a pattern that would be maybe another revenue stream which I could maybe work on a little bit, which would be lovely. I don't know. Anyway, so that is, I'm really happy with the yarn choices. I'm definitely making something with this, whether I fudge the Vintersol pattern or whether I design a pattern on my own. Um, yeah, I just don't know. Oh, with this swatch, I did, I knit it in the round. So I wanted to be constantly knitting like I would be during a project because a color work purling just is awful. And I don't want to do that. <laughs> and also my gauge might be considerably different. So what I did was I, I actually brought the yarn around and knit and brought the yarn around. And then when I was when I was blocking it, I just snipped it all and just laid it flat. And uh, yeah, so I, I now have this like little kind of funky headband, maybe. <laughs> like this. That's what all the cool kids are wearing nowadays. Oh look, I have enough to do it. Amazing. I am the coolest. Yes, you can say it. I think it's really warm and cozy. My forehead gets cold. Forehead warmers. That's how you do it. Yeah. So the last thing I've been making then is uh, just a little bit of spinning. I've been working on my spin for the Andrea Maori shift cowl or the night shift shawl. I probably will do a cowl. I think I'll wear the cowl more. Um, but I'm spinning this beautiful bat by Pretty Funky Fibres. And it is a blend of merino, alpaca, tassa silk and mint fibre. So this bat was 50 grams and it is spinning up really pretty. This is the colours. I must get some mid, mid shots because they're really nice. Um, so someone asked me how I prepare a bat for spinning. So what a great question. I did not know this until I went to, I was at my retreat and someone was like, just do this. I was like, oh my gosh, of course. So this is your bat. This bat was approximately three times bigger, three times wider. And what I'm doing is grabbing bits from the top. You can actually do anything you want with a bat. You can split it in the middle like that. You can separate it out into colors if it's like a gradient. 
Um, I could separate out all the white bits if I wanted and all the green bits and all the blue bits uh, but I what's the point <laughs> they've been blended together for a reason so what I, I'm doing is I'm just coming to the top and just separating out a little chunk and then I'm just just pulling it down like that and I'm, I'm making a roving basically so I'm going to split this down again one more time And that's basically how you prepare a bat, a bat for spinning. You can start at either end. Um, if you want to, try and spin a worsted yarn. Doing a bat would not be a good idea because all the fibres are, they're kind of in the same direction, but um, they've been moved around quite a lot. Uh, if you want to do a proper, proper um, worsted weight, worsted, sorry, not worsted weight, worsted spun yarn. So all the fibres are aligned and you get this really sleek, strong yarn. Um, you'd have to get like a properly, a proper roving pulled off of combs, which is a different thing. I don't have those yet. <laughs> so then when you have your, your little bit, it's a little bit bitty. You've got bits coming off different ways. So I tend to just pre-draft by just pulling a little bit separating out the hands, feeling the pull between the hands. Now I, a lot of people that I that I teach to spin, grab this and kind of move it back like that along. Now that is not good because it's going to cause like the fibres to move back with you. And if you can see that, they're all kind of pushed back. So you're gonna end up with sweaty clumps. No sweaty clumps, not allowed. So what you do is you pull a little bit, then you let go hold, let go, hold, draft, let go, hold, let go, hold, draft, let go, and if there's still quite a lot that you need, just let go instead. Don't be sliding that hand along, don't be pulling all those, all the fibres with you. Let go and just move your hand because I, that's often when I'm when I'm showing people how to draft, that's the biggest problem that they have, the sweaty clumps behind the hand. <laughs> let go. Just let go, man. It's okay. So, yeah. And I find that pre-drafting is good. If you're not quite ready to draft as you spin, pre-drafting is the way to do it. Let go. Like the death grip. Now you see this, the way it's turning back on itself. Oh my God, it's the end of the world. No, it's not. It's fine. Let's just pop it back. And if it comes apart when you're spinning it, guess what? The twist, you can twist it back in together. It's fine. I was teaching my sister how to spin. She was just really interested. She saw me spinning with the spinning wheel. She was like, I wanna learn how to do it. <laughs> So I taught her how to spin and she was doing the classic thing, the sweaty grip, sweaty slide. Let's call it the sweaty slide. And um, yeah, it's just, it's something I observed with her and something I've observed with other people. Um, the drafting is very important to get the hang of. Uh, if you can't draft, you can't spin. So, but it's very easy to learn because it's the feel of it. Just keep practicing. So now I've just wound that up into a little ball. I'm taking out my hair, which is too long, but I bet all of my skeins. So now I have a little, a little ball, a little nest of yarn ready to spin. And you can just, it just spins off like that. You just, that's how you prep a bat for spinning. That's how I do it anyway. And there's a lot of different ways to do it, but that's a good way. It's a nice, easy way. So I still have quite a lot to do, but I'm happy with that. So with that, I will love you and leave you and I will see you next week. Bye.